Good, so good morning, everyone, and welcome to the second community workshop we are organizing on water management and natural solutions. This time, as part of this uh, Postnan Enterprise Summit, which is co hosted by the Postnan City Hall and the Connecting Nature Enterprise Platform. My name is Antonia Lorenzo, I am the director of BioAsso which is the industry leader of the, of the community on water management in the enterprise platform. Together with my colleague Gerardo, we will be moderating this workshop for the next hour. Let me inform you that this session is being recorded. Um, it will be available in, con in the Connecting Nature website after the summit, so next week, from the 5th of July. Also, we are running a pool in the main events area throughout the two days of the summit on measures to support the market development for nature-based solutions. So I would like to remind you all uh, here about this pool and ask you to complete it during the day in case you haven't done it yet. Uh, just to give you a bit of background about this session in February, this year we organized our first workshop on water management and nature-based solutions from a private sector perspective. Based on the feedback uh, we received uh, from the participants and the main topics of interest. This time we have arranged this exciting uh, session with success stories between natural-based enterprises working with the public sector. Today we come with uh, the participation of three natural-based enterprises registered in our community that will showcase three exciting projects on natural-based solutions in close cooperation with public entities. But before I introduce the three speakers, I would also like to remind you that the, you can ask questions using the questions and answers section, which is on the right hand side of your screen. You can pose your question directly while you are listening to the presentations. At the end of each presentation, we will take some of your questions and ask them directly to the panelists. And with no further delay, I would like to welcome and introduce you to these uh, three panelists uh, we have today. In the first place, um, from Slovenia, we have Mrs. Alenka Mubi Salasnik, representing the Lipnos Company for Applied Ecology. Lipnos was established in, two, in 1994 as a company devoted to research, development, and application of natural ecosystems for protection and restoration of the environment. From early research in the field of water ecosystem and development of constructed wetlands for wastewater treatment, Limnos offers services to tackle different environmental problems using, using co-natural approaches. Today, Alenka is going to present a collaborative and very interesting project with the government of Montenegro, where they uh, developed a strategy and an action plan to implement natural-based solutions in the country. She will also talk about a specific case study on reed beds for the treatment of sewage slab. In the second place, we will have the opportunity to hear from Mr. Camille Saremba from the Own Water Foundation, which is based in Poland. The Own Water Foundation was established in 2013 as an organization that raises funds, Initiative Croc Sector Cooperation, initiates Croc Sector Cooperation, sorry, and implements educational and cultural projects related to the promotion of knowledge around the Odra River. Today, Camille will present a recent project with floating gardens they have implemented on the Varta River in close cooperation with the cities of Poznan, which is one of the front runner cities participating in the, in the Connecting Nature project. And last but not least, to close our session, we will have the opportunity to listen to Mrs. Mercedes Pérez from Paisajes Resilientes, which is a technical studio established in Spain in 2013, around the landscape as a meeting point of the cross vision of gardening, agronomy, environmental science, architecture, and urbanism. Mercedes 
will take us uh, through a co-design and implementation of a sustainable urban drainage system in an educational center in the city of Malaga. So, Gerardo, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Antonia, and welcome everyone again. Uh, just to, to remind you that uh, we have uh, created a short poll here on the right side of your screen. You can answer a very simple question for you to warm up a little bit about uh, meetings, uh, online meetings, and if you are multitasking while attending this type of uh, meeting. So please uh, answer the question and we will show the results at the end. And another reminder, if you are going to pose any question to any of our speakers, please use the Q&A section um, on the right side of the screen. Don't use the chat, uh, but use the Q&A section, please. So uh, let's get started with our first uh, speaker. Hi, Alenka. How are you? <laughs> um, Hi. Hello. Morning. Hi, Alenka. Uh, I will introduce you. Alenka Salasnik is a project manager at Lipnos, and for the last uh, seven years, she has been in charge of project management and communication on nature-based solutions. She started build building her career around project coordination in communication and innovation and entrepreneurship at the Public Agency for Technology of the Republic of Slovenia. And lately, she's been focusing on stakeholder coordination and customer uh, relations. She is also deputy president of the Global Water Partnership in Slovenia and former coordinator of consortia of environmental companies in Slovenia for, for the Western, Western Balkans. Alenka, uh, well, thank you very much again for accepting our invitation. You can share now uh, your screen and proceed with your, with your presentation. So over to you. Thank you very much, Antonia. Thank you very much, Gerardo. It's nice to be here with all of you today. Our company was invited to present our experience with communicating to public sector stakeholders and illustrate this communication with an example. I'm the project manager, a CEO in the company, and I chose the case uh, to show what can be done in cooperation with the public sector. This case was elaborated under the framework of development assistance program between two countries, ours, Slovenia, and Montenegro as a recipient country. Okay. Okay. Uh, our company, oh, I went too far. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, our company delivers nature-based solutions since its establishment in 1994. Uh, we call our nature-based engineering approach eco-remediations and apply it for human impact prevention and mitigation to natural ecosystems. We are a team of six with the different study backgrounds from civil engineering, biology, chemistry, agronomy. We focus on wetland technology applied mostly on water-related problems that occur in both natural or built environment. Here you can see some examples of what we do. So we are focusing on delivering multifunction benefits of our engineered applications, which are not only treatment, but also water retention and supporting biodiversity. In the future, we'd like to support more integrated solutions where water treatment would be just one aspect of community-led investments. To achieve that, we are well aware that a significant amount of communication, education and networking will be required, also with the public sector. Now, to come to the point now, I wanted to talk about a more holistic approach of delivering nature-based solutions. Uh, this is a result of a top-down approach and involved communication on decision-making level responsible authorities. This was followed by concrete implementation of several different nature-based solutions for environmental problems in the, in the state of Montenegro. You can see in the diagram below how the process evolved. Firstly, there was an eco-remediation strategy for the country uh, formulated, uh, and it was aligned with the responsible ministry of the environment. Remember, eco-remediation is our label for nature-based. The technology was explained and then National Ministry, together with the responsible agency for the environment, formulated key problems that we thought can be efficiently solved with nature-based solutions. The result of this process, 18 areas of application were suggested and their benefits explained in detail still to uh, both um, designated authorities. 
The strategy was adopted on the governmental level in 2014 as Montenegro de declared itself as an ecological state. Along the way, we are now funneling the process, four most pressing issues for the government were selected for project um, drafting. Issues like wastewater and uh, sewage sludge treatment, um, numerous abandoned landfills that they had, and degraded areas that required sanitation. The defined projects were funded from various sources. This was an important part of the um, process to find funding for what we have envisaged. And it was very important that along the way we could see this funding support for implementation of different pilot investments. This opened the possibility of communicating to local municipalities where we um, hoped to provide not just the solution but also the funds. You know that the mayor is always concerned about the cost, particularly in the case of projects with environmental impact. Local communities could identify themselves with nature base rather easily because we worked in rural areas and where people there are still connected to nature and are more aware of its self-cleaning capacity. So that went um, very fine. Now this is the result uh, of the process and as you can see a rather continuous funding support from different development assistance programs were luckily available for implementation. Now beneficial environmental impact and knowledge wasn't transferred only to the responsible stakeholders and recipient communities but also different local suppliers and contractors that took an active role in implementation, everything from engineers to builders. Uh, you can see the photos on this slide, they are framed with different colors according to the implementation level. The green frame means the projects are completed, the yellows are under implementation just now and will be almost most of all completed this year. And black, uh, there's one project there still left uh, who is in search for funding. Particularly this one black uh, project on the upper left is interesting. Uh, because it is a case of a polluted channel cleanup where excavated sludge from the channel uh, would be reused for reconstructing of this channel near the sea, also for reconstruction of a nearby landfill and embank embankments for river uh, flood protection. So turning waste into resource and protect the site with natural technologies is key and that was accepted um, and acknowledged through the um, strategy that we have formulated. And after the cleanup of the area, uh, this area would be a better place to live with no mosquitoes or bad smell, and of course with a higher tourism development potential. As you can see overall, um, completed and ongoing projects are mainly constructed wetlands for wastewater treatment that do mitigate pollution of lakes and rivers Montenegro is a very water-rich country and this is an important step towards wastewater treatment in rural areas in combination with protection of natural sites, um, various uh, parks. One location of a constructed wetland lies directly near the famous Skadar Lake. In some cases, constructed wetland is installed for a dispersed settlement positioned near the water source. Also unsanitary obsolete landfills are sanitated within the program and their leached water is treated with a passive constructed wetland. There are some locations in one of the natural parks, this is a top right picture, where multiple problems were solved on one spot, combination of wastewater, sludge and landfill leached treatment. But the very first project that we did and perhaps triggered this program was a privately invested constructed wetland for a school, this is a bottom right picture, that served as a demonstration of technology and we used it a lot for showcase. As much as this might be a good result of delivering so many solved hotspots, but these are still separate remediation projects. So in the future, we hope more initiatives would come bottom up and they would result in active management by local public utilities. Local public utilities are the ones that take over the maintenance of the locations once it's completed. And this would result in something we all want to see and that is in fact job creation and local development after the cleanup project or degraded area restoration occurs. 
The result should be an active resource management approach. And I don't mean by resource just water and nutrients, but also area, uh, space, energy, air, human labor, and nature-based solutions can contribute to all these aspects. Now, a network of partners was created in the region already, and we can build upon that in the future. But of course, they must be convinced with the results and the benefits. And we formulate them through different data sets and explain the benefits in, of the selected remediation approach. And here in the table, you can see the various um, a selection of indicators we can use. It should be, of course, legally required treatment standards, but also we communicate energy savings, some technical data, a descriptive data on life quality and community benefits. The indicators differ according to the type of the project and are often tailor-made according to the location and, of course, must involve the reason uh, of the project. So to demonstrate more concretely of what I'm saying is this. In the case of this project, mm, applying sludge drying reed beds for storage and treatment of the sewage sludge from the local wastewater treatment plant in one of the municipalities uh, in Montenegro, the municipality of, Mon of Moikovets, now, sludge is now no longer stored nearby the wastewater treatment uh, plant next to the protected river site, uh, is, not, is no longer uh, dried and transported um, to another location, which costs significant cost to the municipality. Um, so now the uh, sludge is simply stored on these um, reed beds that are positioned next to the wastewater treatment plant. So the value delivered to the community is calculated, of course, in both direct and indirect benefits, environmental and economic. In this case, the return on investment was calculated to be eight years, compared against 30 years of the infrastructure lifespan. So direct benefits are usually economic and are always the main concern of local authorities. You will always be asked about that. So you can see the calculations communicated. It's not just the cost, but it's the savings in terms of how much, uh, how, how much less they will spend on operation and maintenance um, for energy cons uh, consumption, for transport. And the majority of, uh, of the works of operating and maintenance works can be done with local work workforce, which is for a, a mayor or municipality also very important. And here we can also see the case of a calculated, expected calculated benefits in the form of potential new business, because in the, in the end, when these reed beds are full of biosolids, this is a valuable material that can be processed and, and sold. We are monitoring the sludge quality every year, and uh, so far seems safe for you reuse, so this business model um, can occur in the years to come. Environmental benefits are always interested to the local population, and apart from safe sludge storage capacity, the municipality could use the biosolids, if not sold on the market, for forest restoration because they have had these cases of forest fires some years ago. It is very important that the reed beds also keep the, um, the cost uh, of the water tariffs low because these are low income households and some struggle with payments for the water tariff costs and nature based solutions like this do not um, increase the cost of uh, water tariffs. Now, to finalize, I'd just like to say that um, nature-based solutions is still far from being a mainstream for environmental problem tackling, um, and that a lot of communication and a lot of awareness raising will still have to be done um, before we think green first. It is extremely helpful that the European Commission supported um, and recognized and supported nature-based solutions through Horizon program and recommendations to member states, in particular that. But a company like ours invests a lot of daily energy into application development and awareness raising through different channels and uh, forms on the right-hand side. You see all the activities that we do. But the main struggle remains the pool side, uh, and here particularly national legislation and green procurement um, should in the future be more inclusive for nature-based solutions and remind communities and also investors to use the approach of nature-based more, particularly also because of their multifunctional benefits. 
at this point. I'd like to thank you for attention so far, and I'll be happy to reply to any questions that you might have. Back to you, Gerardo. Thank you very much, Alenka. Thank you for your presentation. I think it was uh, very inspiring. And I really liked, actually, the last uh, slide where you presented some key actions to, to kind of stimulate the market uh, demand for nature-based solutions from the private sector, but also the, the public sector. Um, so I, I totally agree with you. And I would like also to mention that uh, later on in the afternoon, we will have a policy dialogue with a high level uh, panel of uh, policymakers discussing about nature-based economy. And I think you just uh, touched upon some of the policy areas that will be discussed uh, more in detail. So I also invite everyone here to, to attend this uh, interesting session. And I think uh, we have uh, one question from the participants, uh, Daniela Rizzi. Hi, Daniela. She was asking, um, well, she said, thank you so much for showing all these examples. And she's asking, how do you see the design of uh, constructed wetlands in urban settings, considering the competition for, for space availability? I don't know if you were expecting this question, but uh, what would you <laughs> don't say? Don't worry. Don't worry. This, thank you for the question. Um, space is always a question and we do regard it as a resource as i've mentioned it's not just water it's not just the the treatment services but space is an asset today and uh, normally we do work more in the rural areas so in urban um, areas having a constructed wetland yes for an individual household but for larger areas they are usually not available also in the case of sludge drying reed beds uh, against um, standard wastewater treatment plant, the space isn't so available around it unless it's installed somewhere completely new. So this is a, a problem that uh, we always um, compete against. And that's a, one of the main reasons why the standard technologies win in the case where space is not available. Yeah, that's absolutely true. All right. Thank you very much for, for this answer. And there are no more questions, but maybe I can ask you um, another one, something more general. So uh, perhaps uh, after your experience uh, developing this public program together with the government of Montenegro, uh, what is, in your opinion, the main benefits for a company like yours uh, of collaborating with public bodies of this, of this size, uh, this, this relevance? And if you could point out uh, perhaps some recommendations for, for nature-based enterprises which are expecting to, to engage in a similar project like yours. Also, if, yeah. you, if you came up with, if you encounter some obstacles, could you give us some, some details? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Three questions in one. <laughs> I'll, I'll try to elaborate. Um, now, the benefits with communicated on more program level, of course, are... Um, are are several because in order to um, to an installation like that to, to come true all the stars must be aligned so we have to have everything from from the ears on the other side uh, we have to have the the problem owner uh, we have to have the, the design the, the local initiative the um, the builder that understands and uh, of course the funding for everything to to be implemented so in this case this was all aligned and it was a um, it was a few years uh, of the process. It, it, it took a few years uh, of this process to finally come down to a strategy and come down to what exactly we want to do. But after after this uh, process, um, things went um, went more smoothly. Although the funding was always something that we could um, that was discussed, and in the end, luckily, it was available. So communicating with the public sector. They are aware of all these elements. They need to align in order to something to be uh, to be realized. What we have learned from the process um, is this: um, you have to stem from the problem and find the problem owner, and this is the main communicator. In environmental um, problems, are usually public problems, and therefore you will get to communicate with public stakeholders quite a lot. And it's not the technology that you want to, to, to sell and or communicate, but it's the solution. And that's why I wanted to stress, you have to give the calculation of what will happen afterward, what will be better, what will be the benefit, what will be an opportunity after an area will be restored um, in a different 
manner. Um, and also the communication with the public, um, with, um, with, uh, with the villagers is also important. And here there were some, um, some struggles that we have had. Um, on one location, they denied us starting uh, of, of the concrete project because they um, connected that we are doing something else, something connected to some hydropower plant, which is absolutely not true. And then again, a new um, set of communication had to had to proceed, and then they were calmed, and we could uh, complete um, our communication. So you have to be present, you have to be there, and always available for explanation, and in the end, deliver what was agreed. All right. I, ho I hope that was there another point that I no, missed. No, I, I think you covered everything. So thank you very much for the, for your answer. Thank um, you. Thank you, Alenka. Again, I think uh, it's time to move uh, to our next uh, speaker. So um, Camille Salemba from On Water Foundation. Hi, Camille. How are you? All good. Welcome to Broad Twelve. Hello, Gerardo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello, hello. We are now on the water near the uh, bridge. <laughs> Have a bridge order. Wow, that's beautiful. Uh, we have a presentation uh, of uh, our community, of our foundation. Uh, I'm sure. Let, let me first, uh, sorry, uh, Camille, I will, okay. I will shortly introduce you for our participants to, to get to know about you a bit uh, more in detail, and then you can share your, your screen. So, okay, okay. Just a second, I will, I will introduce you, uh, Camille. Uh, well, we have Camille, uh, which is the president of uh, On Water Foundation. He's together with uh, Marek, uh, a, Hili, a colleague of uh, his. And uh, Camille, he's one of the members of uh, our community of uh, water management in the enterprise platform. And he's also one of the key players uh, behind the implementation of the floating gardens in the city of Poznan, which is carried out in the frame of the Connecting Nature project. Since uh, 2013, Camille has been conducting educational and cultural activities with adults, teenagers and children. And he's also the originator of uh, and head of the floating construction team for schools at the Odra Centrum. Uh, which is an educational and, and cultural center in, in Broklau that is implementing educational projects uh, around ecology and environmental protection of rivers and water bodies. Um, I have here that in 2014, you were awarded with an honorary degree for merits for Lower Silesia province. And one year later, you were awarded uh, with the title Creative uh, Broklau Citizen and in the category of Society and City. You are also a member, Camille is also a member of the Inland Navigation Council at the Ministry of uh, Infrastructure. So, um, as, as Camille was introducing, they will, they will uh, show uh, a, a very nice video about uh, the activities they are carrying out at the On Water Foundation. Um, the video will be played in, in, in Polish, but we will have an English subtitle so everybody can, can follow. And just uh, as a reminder, in case you have any questions, please use the Q&A uh, section on the right side of your of your screen. And now, yes, uh, Camille, please, um, you you are free to share your screen um, whenever you are you are ready. Thank you. Thank you. We share our presentation. Uh, moment. It on vlog play. Witam wszystkich we Wrocławiu, w mieście, w którym płynie druga co do wielkości rzeka w Polsce. Jako fundacja spróbuję opowiedzieć tych kilka lat, pięć minut. To nasze grono wielbicieli, kilka akcji, które przeprowadzamy wspólnie z Wrocławianami, z szkołami, z dziećmi. Zaczęliśmy od sprzątania rzek. To poważny problem, myślę, że nie tylko w naszym mieście. Wciągnęliśmy w akcję społeczność lokalną, szkoły, dzieci, rady osiedla, wszystkich, którzy mieli dobrą wolę. Tych śmieci było na początku dużo, coraz więcej. Z czasem okazywało się, że musieliśmy uczyć również wędkarzy, ludzi, którzy gdzieś tam z czasem spędzali coraz więcej 
aktywności nad rzeką. Pomagały nam dzieci, wolontariusze, młodzież. Z czasem akcja rozrastała się na tyle, że staliśmy się własną marką. Mieliśmy wtedy czas budować historię wrocławskiego węzła wodnego. Te tablice pokazują, że to ważne. W międzyczasie cały czas edukacja w kolejnych latach pozwalała nam wciągać do zabawy, nauki małe dzieci. Dzięki temu powstawały pływające ogrody. Jeden z naszych sztandarowych produktów było ich kilka na początku, coraz więcej. W kolejnych miastach, w Poznaniu, we Wrocławiu, w kolejnych latach stawialiśmy kolejne pływające ogrody. Dzięki zaproszeniu Urzędu Miasta w Poznaniu prowadziliśmy aktywności również dla dzieci. Taka zabawa poprzez naukę, robienie pływających ogrodów również na przykład na rzece Cybina w centrum Wrocławia sprawiła, że kolejna energia dała nam czas na budowanie pływających ogrodów. Okazało się, że ptaki również akceptują te ogrody. Unikalne gatunki w centrum miasta wprowadziły się i zamieszkały w tych pływających ogrodach. To było szczególnie dla nas przyjemne, bo na starówce czapla to rzadkość. Z czasem okazało się, że kolejne ogrody powstawały również w kolejnych parkach w Poznaniu. Tutaj widzimy park Wilsona. Bardzo ciekawa realizacja, woda stojąca. Miejsca pobytowe dla ptaków, kosze lęgowe, to wszystko sprawiło, że poczuliśmy się jeszcze bardziej doświadczeni w budowaniu pływających ogrodów. I właśnie wtedy zaczęliśmy kończyć budowę pierwszego w Europie pływającego centrum Szkoły na Wodzie. Unikalny projekt, 800 m2, obiekt pływający, bardzo precyzyjnie zbudowany, w śluzach niezmiernie wymagające pływanie który stoi w tej chwili, jest otwarty w samym centrum Wrocławia na Starówce. Obiekt unikalny, ekologiczny, który jest podzielony na kilka stref, a oczywiście wokół niego pływające ogrody. W tej chwili dzięki unikalnemu programowi mamy również w nim zajęcia z dziećmi, zajęcia z bezpieczeństwa, ochrony środowiska oraz wielu innych sprawności. Goszczą u nas również muzycy. Emeryci, seniorzy, którzy poprawiają swoje sprawności. To wszystko w formie warsztatów, umiejętności również technologicznych, nowoczesnych w roku 3D, czy małej szkutni, pozwala dzieciakom poprawiać swoje zdolności manualne, pracować w oparciu o materiały ekologiczne i tworzyć coś własnymi rękami, o czym czasami zapominają współczesne szkoły. I w efekcie doświadczać rzeki trochę w inny sposób. W tej chwili Odra Centrum działa pełną parą. My pływamy z mieszkańcami, staramy się sprzątać również rzeki. Dzięki temu Odra Centrum staje się kolejnym miejscem ciekawym na mapie Wrocławia, a przy okazji ekologicznym centrum. Thank you, Marek. Thank you, Camille. I think it's a very nice uh, video and um, also very attractive. Uh, I, I really feel sad we couldn't travel to Poznan uh, this time um, and, and visit these floating gardens in person, but I'm sure we will have more opportunities in the, in the future. And um, I'm afraid we don't have any questions. Everybody was commenting about uh, how jealous they are of your background and how beautiful this project is so perhaps i could uh, ask you a question just for for to break the ice and invite everybody to 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 pose any questions um we we saw in the video that uh, children and young people uh, were very important in the design and the in the construction of these uh, floating gardens so what would you say is uh, their opinion their perception for this type of solutions. Um, do, do they recognize how important they are, how, how valuable these solutions are in, in our cities? What is, your, what is your opinion about this? Uh, our opinion is a is, uh, uh, great chance uh, to see uh, in whole year uh, 
how influence uh, on the life of animals in the river, uh, how many uh, small people live under the floating gardens, how many birds uh, for is uh, a small habitat in the center of the city. Uh, the children can see uh, in whole year uh, how influence is of our gardens, yes? All right. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's great. And um, now you were talking about um, biodiversity and how birds are going to these floating gardens. I was wondering also, how, how do you measure, measure the impact of uh, the floating gardens on, on biodiversity? Do you uh, take some surveys? Do you, do you go there and count how many birds are uh, coming to visit these floating gardens? Do you cooperate also with the university, for instance, for this kind yes, of uh, yes. studies? Uh, uh, we, uh, we have uh, in last year uh, a new project with uh, University of Biology of uh, Wroclaw. Uh, she doing a project and measuring uh, uh, how impact is of our uh, floating garden for clearance the water uh and uh, how many people uh, how many birds more are in the city and the, in the center yes uh we have uh, uh, uh the during of the pro project is about three years yes uh-huh okay great thank you uh Marek. we have one question from the from the audience um i can direct the question to you now and um, is from Isabel Seeger um, she said that she loves the project but she is wondering if uh, there were some local opposition to the floating gardens for instance from the boating companies who are worried about uh, navigation do you know something about uh, this no 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 uh, 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 we don't have problem uh, uh, with the for navigation. Then we uh, know uh, in the center of the river, uh, for our gardens uh, in on the shore. Yes, okay. uh, the center of the city of river is a free. Yes. All right. Perfect. I think you answered the question uh, fully. So I think uh, there were no more questions uh, for you. I would like to thank you again for for this uh, nice uh, video and for your uh, presentation. And I think we are uh, on, on time. We are following the schedule. So I would like to uh, give the word to our first, our third uh, speaker. And I would like to introduce Mercedes Perez. Hi, Mercedes. Um, she is, uh, Mercedes is the founder and coordinator of the technical studio Paisajes Resilientes. Uh, she, she has developed her career as an environmental scientist and landscaper. And she has taken part in landscape and gardening projects, restoration of uh, historic gardens and urban planning. At the same time, she is a teacher for advanced uh, vocational training of the education department of the regional government of Andalusia in areas such as forestry, agronomy, and landscaping. Um, I think it was uh, one year ago uh, when we heard about uh, your project, Mercedes, and we, I think we couldn't miss this opportunity to, to invite you today and to ask you to present it to, to all our uh, participants, to the audience. So I think we are all looking forward to uh, hearing about this project. So please, uh, Mercedes, the floor is yours you can share your screen whenever okay. you are ready thank you for thank all you. and we can start um, okay Perfect. Uh, this project was launched by the agricultural department of the center for vocational training uh, universidad laboral malaga as part of the learning program uh, learning with companies. It implements um, a set of technical or sustainable urban drainage. 
specifically infiltration trends and rain garden, in order to solve a specific flood problem. Uh, the collaborating firms were Cuarto Creciente as participation team, uh, Doctora Architect uh, Celia Martinez Hidalgo as designer and construction coordinator, and Mediterranean as construction management uh, enterprise. Design and construction team were advanced specific vocational training papils. Date of design and construction uh, were uh, 2018. The project is located in the city of Málaga, Andalusia, in a center for early and primary school. The schoolyard has a large soft paving terrain which facilitates the incorporation of sustainable urban drainage. The school is divided into four zones. Main building, primary and specific education block, main playground and sport ground. Access to the main building, primary and specific education block is through the main gate of the schoolyard while the early education block has its own access. The school playground is used both during regular school hours and in the afternoon for extracurricular uh, activities. What is the problem? The rainy episodes in Malaga are typical of the Mediterranean subtropical climate. Uh, concerning rainfall is low on autumn and winter. In this context, periods of prolonged drought alternative with very short periods of torrential rain. When it rains, there is an area of the water accumulation next to the primary and special education block. In addition to the rain itself, it receives runoff from a nearby slope and water from the roof. When the capacity of the soil is exceeded, the water runs off into the early education block. On the one hand, this means that some plain and transit area cannot be used, as well as insect and other problems associated with the standing water. This can last for weeks. We can watch a video about this situation. Oh, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay, in this sense, there is an opportunity to apply a natural basic solution that imitates natural process uh, to reduce the risk of flooding. This done in combination with uh, water cycle management and planting vegetation. The result will be the creation of a series of rain gardens and an infiltration uh, trench. This is the phases of the project. Phase one, participation and analysis of the current situation in collaboration with uh, Cuarto Creciente. This phase includes the detention of requirements and participative process with the community. The aim is to diagnose the situation and define the strategy. We work it of the quality parameters that serve to analyze uh, a good public space using the initiative project for public space. We can see some photos of the, uh, of the process. The participation process focuses on working with the children. The objective of the activity were to understand the importance of natural in education place. Cuarto Creciente addressing natural deficit disorder and to get information about the use of the playroom from the perspective of the daily experience in the, in the school. The result was the use and demands to define design elements. Then, in these phases, the analysis of the water cycle was carried out. Firstly, analysis of the situation on the site in its context. Analysis of uh, the characteristics of the site, identify a natural flow path, existing water course, and inspiring from nature. Secondly, the analysis of the site to be intervened in order to reach uh, the following objective. Reducing water runoff, define flow uh, routing, and understand opportunity and contracts of the site. 
the project focused on zone two due to the budget. Phase two, design and construction of the sustainable urban drainage with uh, Celia Martinez Hidalgo and the Garden Construction Enterprise Mediterranean. This phase uh, evaluates the most common sustainable urban drainage structure that can be applied. Different parameters should be established for the choice, such as permeability, weather table, climatologic values, rainfall, infiltration flow rate, and then from the quantification of these parameters, uh, we obtain drainage area, in this case, 177 square meters and depth of drainage area, one meter. To combine uh, solution are uh, selected. Three rain garden connected to an infiltration trench. Infiltration trench uh, are longitudinal structural, general phyllite with granular material which infiltrate runoff water from impermeable surface, transporting into a place for infiltration. Rain gardens are vegetated areas that retain, treat, and infiltrate runoff water. In order to reduce the cost, rain gardens don't, re don't replace the entire soil structure. The existing soil is mixed with sandy soil and recycled gravel is used in steel. For safety reasons, uh, it has a spillway connected to the general network. In case the storage capacity is exceeded. About the plant selection, in the case of the infiltration trench, it is selected Huncus inflexus, a species that tolerates temporary water lodging and drought situation. In the case of Brand Garden, a species uh, should be selected according to the horizontal distribution of the section with three zones based, slope, and buffer. Native and adapted species are selected, mainly herbaceous. Some examples are Amophila renaria, Bubleorum fruticosum, Care salvula, or Juncus inflexus. Now we can see some photos of the construction. Now, uh, during the construction work, there were some incidents, rainy days or concrete floor excrete uh, that forced us to reduce the depth in the session to three. At the end, uh, there was a heavy rainfall which allowed us to verify the effectiveness of the implement solution. We can see uh, the photo on the right. Finally, uh, the three phase uh, maintenance and community celebration, the project is monitored to check the functionality of the drainage system and maintenance. Uh, in the first week, weeds started to appear, although this was reduced by the use of mulch. Mulching with pronoun residuals not only reduce weeds, but also maintain soil moisture. During the summer, weekly, manual watering was carried on and weeds were removed. There was no provision for uh, automatic irrigation. The inauguration, inauguration event consisted in a formal uh, presentation on the space to the student of the center. In conclusion, uh, with regard to the technical and economic viability of the experience present, it should be pointed out that, that the technical and environmental needs anticipated were covered. Once the management uh, was abandoned by the vocational training center, maintenance could be described as uh, insufficient, which does not endanger the functionality of the drainage, but is uh, produced a loss of value in terms uh, of biodiversity and other aesthetic values, uh, such flowering. However, I think this is not a problem associated with the proposed solution, but rather a common situation in a space that follows model in which the ecosystemic uh, values of ve vegetation are more important than aesthetic parameters. Anyway, this pioneering experience in Andalusia reflects the importance of plant material in shaping the community space. Infiltration and greening emerge as a local alternative to ordinary drainage networks, avoiding the increment of 
uh, impermeable surface. Now, there are too many catalogs of generic solutions, but I think we need pilot experiment adapted to specific social and environmental conditions. In short, the incorporation of natural basic solution is particularly relevant in territorial and urban intervention action aimed to mitigate the climate change. Thank you for your attention. And sorry for the work, <laughs> construction works in the, <laughs> in the office. In the back, don't worry. <laughs> Thank you very much for your, for your presentation. I think it was very inspiring. We got very uh, positive uh, comments in the chat. And um, I'm sure the audience enjoyed your your case study. And Thank you so much. From my side, I think it was nice to see uh, co-design and co-production of this uh, project because uh, this is something actually important in connecting nature projects. is uh, a really uh, relevant uh, aspect of uh, what we are doing in connecting nature. So it was nice to see how you were already implementing these uh, approaches of co-designing and, and co-producing uh, solutions, nature solutions. Um, I think it's also very important to to have and to showcase this kind of uh, pilot projects. This is small scale pilot projects, uh, especially nowadays that we have a lot of uh, catalogs of uh, nature based solutions and a huge variety of uh, uh, knowledge and information, but then we are also missing these these small projects uh, which are locally adapted to to every specific uh, situation, to the to the social context, to the environmental context of uh, of, the, of, of the of the cities. So I think we have uh, one question from the from the chat. Uh, Sean Kelly from from Glasgow. Uh, he's uh, he's asking what he said. Is he's interested? in knowing um, if there are other innovative rain garden maintenance uh, regimes. He's asking if the municipality uh, of Malaga is doing this, um, if, uh, because they have a, a big plant in Glasgow for rain gardens uh, throughout the city, but uh, he's, he understands that maintenance is sometimes a barrier, an obstacle and a major consideration. So what is your opinion about this? Okay, uh, I think the problem of maintenance uh, is a big problem in all projects who, uh, which incorporate the ve vegetation in another way. No, is uh, when we talk about natural naturalization of city, we forget the cost of this for maintenance, but. Uh, we must to think about the ecosystemic values of this kind of intervention. And I think so the problem is uh, the formation the, of the responsible of this kind of, of action. Uh, because in, uh, in Malaga it's typical to have a, a very beautiful um, grass surface and this is all quality we can afford to the city. And I don't think uh, this is uh, well, a problem if uh, companies and uh, scholars for vocational training try to incorporate this kind of solution in, in, his, in its programs. Uh, in Malaga, there isn't a program about that. In Malaga, it's very common, uh, maybe, public uh, politics to get the shot, the photo, <laughs> and it's usually to, to implement a vertical garden, and maybe we forget the surface, uh, horizontal surface, no? parks, uh, pocket garden, um, drainage solution, I think so. But uh, maybe we are in a point of, uh, in a point very interesting to change this way. I think so. I hope uh, in my poor English, <laughs> do you understand the, the answer? No, it was, I think we all understood. He said, <laughs> he said thank you. So, uh, Mercedes, um, may I ask you another question we have from Richard uh, Hardiman. He's asking in the initial discussions that you had, uh, what what kind of options you, you, you had for nature-based solutions for this flooding problem? Uh, there was an, a proposed solution adopted uh, different from others. I mean, you had rainwater harvesting, fish ponds, there are different solutions. So 
uh, you opted for this one. How was the how was the the decision? Made? Okay, uh, in understanding the academic uh, context, uh, we must uh, we show the pupils another kind of solution, no territorial solution, urban solution, but uh, due to the scale and the budget, <laughs> mainly we 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 objective or we we. Uh, tried or oh, not with Austrian, uh, where the trench guard uh, trench infiltration, no infiltration trench and rain garden, because we have a very little or very low budget and we have a very low time to to implement um, implement this solution, this uh, this project. We have three months <laughs> to get uh, the this objective. Yeah very short <laughs> okay mm. thank you mercedes i think we have time for one last question um pinaki das gupta i i hope i pronounced the name uh, properly um is asking if uh, there is any opportunity for storing the rainwater and reusing it for community use rather than just oh i'm sorry using the floating gardens I think I, I missed uh, the question. Maybe it was uh, um, it was for for Camille and Marek. So, well, just just to remind you that all the questions so we will give it to the to the panelists, and uh, hopefully we will send you the, the questions uh, at the end of the event with all the materials. But I think there was a, another question for for you, Mercedes, uh, from from Aidan Joseph uh, French. Are the children involved in maintaining and monitoring uh, the rain garden? Oh yeah, uh, but uh, only the vocational pupils, the vocational training pupils. Uh, we have um, when I think when you participate in a community project, maybe uh, in the it's difficult to get involved the community, no? Uh, in or get uh, or, or get it in a, during a long time. No, in this case, uh, the idea uh, were uh, or was a community of the scholar uh, children could be involved in the maintenance, but uh, is uh, is then was possible was impossible uh, due to the the organization of the of the school uh, school school center no but uh, the vocational training uh, are during were well, during six months uh, maintenance in the the garden hmm. okay thank you it was uh, very clear um i think we have to wrap up the the session uh it's about time uh, we we started a bit later so um, I believe it's time to, to conclude the, the session. I would like to, to thank once more our three speakers, uh, Alenka, Camille, Marek, and Mercedes for joining us uh, today. And I hope the audience uh, also enjoyed and learned a lot from your successful story, especially when it comes to uh, collaborating with the public sector. As we know, sometimes it's uh, challenging. <clears throat> to everyone that has attended the webinar uh, also thank you very much i think we reached uh, 65 uh, people and um, please keep an eye on the connecting nature enterprise platform and our community on water management because we will keep um, posting opportunities and interesting events and we also look forward to seeing you in future webinars and uh, just to wrap up i want to remind all participants here that there will be a networking session and an opportunity to visit the the expo booths after this session until 11 45 uh, followed by the second round of uh, communities of practice and workshops that they will start uh, quarter to to 12. don't forget we have uh, also organized later on today a policy dialogue with a high level panel of policymakers debating findings and recommendations of a new white paper on the nature-based economy. And remember, you can consult the program of the summit for more details about the time and the content and the sessions today and tomorrow. I would like also to remind you about the live poll we are running in all the sessions this morning. So at the top of your screen uh, on the event tab, there is a, a poll 
So it will take you just uh, 30 seconds. And if you could uh, give us your feedback and what yours and, and your support will be will be appreciated by the by the organizers and will be feeding into the the future sessions we have uh, organized. And uh, I think uh, this is all from my from my side. Thank you again uh, for joining the the session, and I hope you will enjoy the rest of the of the summit. So uh, goodbye and and take care, all of you. We keep in touch. Thank you very much. Thank bye. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.